I'm muted. I noticed it within the first 10 seconds this time, which is good. That's an improvement. Uh, Chang, I'm going on record for like the last three days. I've uh, been muted at the start. But guys, it's talking ball. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I am joined by my good friend, good buddy, uh, Chang. How's it going, Chang? How are you? I'm doing very well uh, here in uh, Kuala Lumpur, the uh, capital of Malaysia, uh, Mr. Sivas. Uh, thank you very much for having me on uh, on this uh, very sure. wet and windy uh, Thursday evening. I hope everyone is uh, buzzing and looking forward to this uh, weekend's fixtures because there are a few mouth-watering uh, clashes uh, on the cards. And just as I said, mouth-watering clashes, uh, we are joined by both Queen Ellie herself uh, that's the one to my uh, right, and also by e, Mr. Ian Mef. Mr. Ian Meth, uh, directly below me. Uh, welcome, uh, Queen Ellie and Mr. Meth. How are both of you doing today? So I think I think Whoa. Ian. I think I did a fake out. I think Ian's not quite ready, but I didn't want to leave him in the back if he was. But we have Ellie for sure. Uh, Ellie, Yay. how are you doing today? Hello, I'm all right. I'm all right. I was just speaking to Alex Fox Office. Yeah, oh yeah. We had a nice chat about Spurs and. He's a good. He's a good guy, despite what everyone, despite what everyone says about him. Yeah, I like him. I think no, I mean, sometimes he gets himself into trouble by saying the truth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can't always. You got to know when to say the truth and when you can't. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, Ellie, you're good though, and you're you're ready for the match this weekend. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the match as well. So I'm. Really Hell yeah! Is that what you were talking to Alex about? Yeah, that and other things, you know, about Secret how our stuff. club's going. I saw a really interesting program with Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I haven't yet, but, no. Uh, it's funny, you mentioned interesting and then those two guys' names in the same sentence. <laughs> so I'm going to have to definitely check this out if that's if, well, it's, if it's that good. Put it this way, it wasn't too complimentary towards leaving. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I can imagine now I'm starting to see why you've liked it. Uh, yeah. same, same with the other, yeah, the other folks you've mentioned. No, big up, big up to everybody. But yeah, that, that sounds yeah. awesome. I'll have to check it out. What's it called? Do you know? Uh, I'll send you the link. Okay, lovely. Yeah, yeah. big up, Ellie. Can have a um, little watch. And and gang, look how many people in the chat are already here or have been here. Um, nice. Jordan, uh, Jordan Heyman uh, mm. says, "Hey, uh, big up, Jordan." Uh, Neil, this comment, I already saw it, made me sad. He said, I so miss listening in and commenting on these live chats already. Uh, a big up to every uh, to everyone, both doing the show and listening in. Come on, you Spurs. Yeah, Neil's had a uh, change in schedule, uh, and so he cannot join in live. Uh, he's, what, a, what a nice comment, though. Uh, but it is sad. We do miss him. Uh, Jess from uh, JSY Talks Football. What up? Saying smash the likes. Everybody... Speaking of smash the likes, if you haven't ever been over to her channel, what are you doing? Uh, see, it's the same name, and I'll get the link up too. Um, JSY Talks Football. All right, awesome. So, yeah, everybody get on over to her too. Check her out. The link is now in the chat for that. Um, Kells is in the house telling everybody to smash the like and subscribe. We've got Stu from the disabled team. Pick up Stu. Uh, Robbie, Lily White Lane is here. And then there's some people talking to each other, showing love amongst amongst themselves. Um, me telling everybody I'm running a few minutes late. I had to clean up some cat mess, unfortunately. Uh, nothing like, and I put it down here, nothing like walking around in socks on a hard floor. And then you step in something squishy and gross. Um, so that is, you know, hey, you, you, you learn, you live and learn and watch where you're going next time, I guess. And I put fecking cats. I've got two cats. So I know where, where they're coming from. <laughs> I don't think he's feeling good. He normally wouldn't do that. but um, So I'll just check him out. But we got Mia uh, in the house as well. Mia, big up to you. Um, Mia's, you Mia's me growing. Yep. Mia and Jess, uh, both uh, channel members. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, and then we've got who else is in the house I haven't said hey to. I know there's a couple people. Yes, Colin Blackshaw. What up, Colin? What a good name you have there, sir. Um, and hey, speaking of good sirs, speaking of good sirs, we've got one of my favorites right here. Uh, Ian, how are you, my man? 
Colin, my man, Chang, my man, is that Ellie there? Is Ellie there yeah, as yeah, well? Your eyes, your eyes do not oh, let's get you, the yes. volume turned up so I can hear you, wonderful people. Chang, my man, always, always a pleasure to be on this show with these wonderful people. Absolutely I wonderful. I haven't done I a show for a cracking crew. Through, uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I'm just trying to get my volumes, uh, my volume sorted out. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no problem. But, no uh, problem. Go on, you carry on. I'm sure I'll be able to hear fine. Well, let us know whenever you're all you're I've all got, good. I'm good, and the, okay. even turn the even turn the brightness up. Oh, you all look, look wonderful that. now. You're all, oh. the floodlights are on, guys. The floodlights are on. So uh, yeah, we're all here, all here, and uh, ship shape and Bristol fashion. I don't know what that means, but something some old naval term <laughs> from this country. So uh, I, I like it. The, I, I haven't heard. I've heard the ship shape part, of course, but that second half was yeah. uh, was new to me. So um, yeah, uh, good to have you, man. Very good to have oh, you. Are, are, to are you back? back on. Always are a pleasure. Back home? To be your show, Colin. Thanks, man. Thank you. Are you are you back home? Uh yeah yeah for for two or three weeks for, yeah exactly tell you just set it off somewhere yeah. else again yeah back, back to Spain in the middle of April oh it's oh, a tough man. life it's it is it, it is it's is, is a tough life it, yeah it does not sound easy well I'm glad you've been able to carve out some time for us here uh we've got a bunch of great people in the chat we got my buddy James James Tottenham fan um he's got he's got a good channel too uh, James loves Spurs uh, I'll, I'll throw the link of that in James don't don't worry. Uh, Niall Kane is here. Ellie's buddy. He's my buddy too. But him, him yeah. and Ellie, are, him and Ellie are homies. The man from Montrose. Yes, he? exactly. Yeah. Big up Niall. Um, I was bigging up everybody. And look at this! Holy moly! I didn't know. I didn't notice this earlier. Stu became a member. Uh, big up to big up to Stu uh, for becoming a channel member, a member of La Familia, as we call it. Uh, and then tagline: The only way out is in a box. So um, yeah, if if you whoa, speaking of speaking of members, one just popped in the the Viking member uh, as we call him. I'll just bring him straight in. He doesn't need any more introduction than that. It's Kuva, but where is he? Oh, there it's Kuva. Woo! Sorry, everybody everybody moved Kuva, around there, but Kuva. Kuva, what is up, buddy? Big up everyone. Um, Ian, good to see you. Saved up a bit of cash again, mate. Oh, do you? I haven't been on for so long that I've actually been able to give Colin thousands of dollars just to be on the show, Kuva. So uh, yeah, good to be, good to see you, my man. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, been a while, been a while. It wasn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm good here. Good here. Thanks. Much. Just trying to shake off a headache though, Colin. So I'm oh, seeing well. how it goes. Did you um, take some paracetamol? Yeah, it's just um, something about headaches. I prefer to have a broken leg than a headache. At least yeah. you can deal with that kind of pain. When it's the head, it's something else. For sure. Yeah. No, I, I get that um, 100%. 100%. And Ian, Ian, ship shape and bristle fashion means you're meticulously clean, well turned out and well arranged. Oh, yeah, I know what it means. I don't know where it came from. I'm trying <laughs> to get the, the, the origins I, I, of it. I, I, I think, here, like, the whole... Sorry, what were you saying, Ellie? It does say here that it comes from a reference order... The condition of a ship. The yeah. Express, expression had its origins when Bristol was the major west port, coast port of Britain at a, at a time when all its shipping was ma ma maintained it's in good Bristol. order from ship shape and Bristol fashion. Okay. Yeah. Every yeah. day is a school day. If you don't yeah, learn something really? every day, you're messing up. There's so many opportunities yeah. to learn something every single day, no matter who you are, how old you are. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, if awesome. it's good enough for the Bristol's, it's good enough for me. That's what Kuva cool. always says. Yeah, it was, it was it was a good school day yesterday as well for me. She was she was a lovely girl. Oh, oh, oh my god! Bristol could mean another thing. Can't <laughs> oh, no, that sounds really bad nowadays. <laughs> I I know I know it does. Um, I'm like Kuva. Um, you want to lock your door? Um, be away from a window. They come for you, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so guys, speaking of memberships. Uh, we've got Stu as a member who is now eligible for our Tuesday uh, member watch alongs, but Jess gifted out another membership. I can't see who it went to, but I will check in just a second, but big up to whoever got that membership. Um, awesome. Blossom. Thank you guys. You're so, so, so kind. Jess too kind. Uh, Stu, you as well. Um, can't wait to see Stu, you in the member show next week. Um, 
But Lee Smithy Smith, another member is in the house. Woo! What's up, Lee? Um, oh, yeah, of course, Jess, got you. And then, um, yeah, guys, so uh, I don't think I've missed anyone. I'll go back in just a second, double check. I'm pretty good at accidentally missing people. If I accidentally miss you, I'm really sorry. But I'm so glad that everybody is here. Um, <coughs> So, um, real quick, I wanted to throw this up, too. Here is El Tel Cockerel's link. He is my normal co-host. He wasn't able to be here. I mean, he's probably going to be here. He's working um, until, you know, a reasonable time. Um, but, guys, he had to return to work in person yesterday, and he killed it. Uh, let's all wish him some – that doesn't make sense. Let's all wish him, congratulate him. I, I, I typed that late at night. But let's all wish him congratu some congratulations when we see him on returning to work. He was nervous. He did a great job. Um, but, yeah, time for some time for some football. I, I talked about a couple of these things yesterday, but not with you folks, really. Have you heard that we're supposedly interested in a Marcus Edwards uh, return to the lane? Um it's a weird one uh, for me, but it's 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 come out, and, and and I guess I can make it make sense in my mind. You know, he's not doing it bad in the Portuguese league, but he's not doing great in the Portuguese league either. And we have that fifty percent clause or whatever, so he would effectively yeah. be, you know, fifty percent off or something. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys? Would you? Uh, what, what do you think about it? And we'll go. We'll start. We'll go different directions every time because I have a couple of things I'd like to talk about. But Chang, we'll go with you first, buddy. What do you think about a, a Marcus Edwards return and, and Crystal Palace supposedly wanting him as well? And yeah, the way I see it, if Marcus Edwards were to return to N seventeen, he would uh, mostly be a bit part player. I don't see him being a sure starter, not with uh, the kind of ambitions, the kind of. Uh, uh, aspirations that we have for top four and even challenging uh, top three uh, if that were to come to pass uh, next season uh, depending on how well we do in the uh, summer transfer window for me Marcus Edwards uh, the ship has long sailed for him to be an integral and a vital cog in uh, the uh, Ange ball revolution I was uh, expecting or rather I was hopeful that uh, uh, Marcus Edwards would have been uh, uh, bought uh, during the Conte era, but that didn't come to pass. And however many years later, if this, if there is any truth at all in us uh, actively scouting uh, Marcus Edwards for a potential uh, dramatic return to N17, I can see him warming the bench just like Oliver Skip, unless he somehow rather turns it around, proves uh, us all wrong and uh, show his worth to Big Ange, then you know, I mean, you never know, but uh, Marcus is, Edwards... He is, and he's I, homegrown. I, you, you brought up a good point about him being home. You, you compared him to Oliver Skip. You know, they're both homegrown yep. players. That's a good point. Yep. Uh, but he's he's not tearing it up in, in the in the Portuguese league. He's Because, I mean, whenever Bruno Fernandes... You see what I'm using as an example with this one. But whenever he was linked to, to teams, he was like the best player or, or one of the best players in the mm. Portuguese league. But you can't really say Correct. that about Marcus Edwards. Um so yeah, I don't, I don't know. But we'll jump to we'll jump to Ian, Mr. Yeah, Mr. I'm, Mr. Ian. I'm totally with Chang on this. Uh, I'm not one of Levy's biggest critics by a long stretch, but it's got a smell of uh, a cheap fifty percent off uh, um, discount deal for Levy. Um, the, 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 there is a there is an element of uh, um, we are going to need more homegrown players. That Adrian uh, put a, a useful thing on the the talk and ball chat group with the players, and some of them might be required to move on and when you look at that that would leave us woefully short because i think skip is one of those ones that's probably not going to make it parrot another one not going to make it um yeah there might be one or two others that, that come through from the youth ranks but we're certainly going to be short of homegrown at least in the short term unless some of these kids can can step up but i agree with chan completely um you know <laughs> Pochettino's on record now as saying, you know, this club needs to get away from an ambition of just finishing top four. Yeah, you know, he, he's wow. he's a, he's he's won in Japan, he's won in Australia, he's won in he's won in Scotland. Yeah, this is a step up, but this is a man who's not used to coming second or third. This is a man that joins clubs to win things with them. So if we're going to win things, I don't think we're going to do it 
unless Marcus Edwards is a peripheral player. And I don't see much in it for him or us, for him to come to back to us and be a peripheral player. Honestly, I, with him, it's like, why not have gotten Yata for free? Um, you know, obviously there might be a wage disparity there, him coming from the, the Saudi league, but you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. it, those players seem like they're like on similar levels to me. So it, it, you're right. I don't think it makes tons of sense. Els, can you make it make sense to me? Us going um, in for Marcus Edwards? No, I can't make it make sense because when you look at the player in his entirety, he hasn't really set the light anywhere he's been. He, he, we loaned him out to Norwich. He was a disappointment. They sent him back. Um, he had a reputation of being a bit of a party animal at Spurs. Never got oh, a looking at our club. He didn't play one game for us, right? And then he went to Vit Vittoria de Gimarish and he scored 17 in 77. So I don't even know who they are, this team. And then Paul yeah. Lisbon, he's only scored 14 in 64. I know you don't just judge a player on what he can give you in goals, but his assists this year is one assist. You know, and if he's supposed yeah. to be a winger attacking midfielder, you're supposed to create more than one chance in a season. So definitely, you should be um, contributing. Yeah, I mean, Richarlison what has more assists to that. our team. Not much more, more than what our present wingers are doing. Our, our present wingers are creating more chances and scoring more than he does in a in a much tougher league. So that 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 puts the feelers out on that one. I think also. Might be his level. Crystal Palace is a better fit for him. But we're Shit, and he'll probably score different. some worldies for him too. You know what I mean? Like he'll have good Didn't matches. He? He's just not a consistently good enough myself. player. I can't see it in myself that he's scoring worldies for them. I but I can see him carving out a better career at a lesser club, but not mm -hmm. at our club. If we've got ambition, Marcus Edwards is not the way forward. Right, I, I agree, and I think Kuva probably does too. Kuva, if if Marcus Edwards comes in uh, as as uh, you know one of our four or five signings or whatever this summer, uh, are you going to be pissed? I think first things first, this ball needs some air in it. I've been heading it for ages. And I know. Hold, hold, hold on, let me uh, watch this. <laughs> um, yeah, back. Uh, oh, there we go. Sorry, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Marcus Edwards, it's another one on a long line of the great hope at Tottenham that they're going to be this uh, amazing player coming through the ranks, and they just haven't been. It's, it's, he's a, he's okay. I mean, he's got he's got a bit of skill, he's got a bit of pace, but this isn't somebody that's going to take us forward, in my opinion. This will just be another case of, um, uh, you know, Levy going for the cheap option. It's got the homegrown element to it. It ticks some boxes that are convenient. It doesn't get us any further than that. Um, I'm agreeing with everybody that, that, who's, that's spoken so far, except for Ian saying that I'm not with Levy out. That part of that I'll ignore, but the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, yeah, it, it just it just stinks. Of, we, we've been calling for ages, you know, getting rid of the deadwood, all the superfluous squad players that never really get game time. We pay what wages. Word, yeah. I'll, ju I'll just say it filling half. I'll, I'll just see it as um, getting rid of the deadwood and then restocking with average players. Yeah, it's like, oh, wait, we're, we're out of dead. We're getting low on deadwood. Yeah, exactly. It's Bring him and Timo, Timo Werner's the other one. If we sign him on a permanent, I'll be a, oh, uh, no. I'll, I'll just think we'll be going backwards again. It, it's like a, I was with you. I was with you. And then you said the Timo Werner thing. And now I'm wondering um, if I need to do a wealth. Is there a gas leak in your house? Are you sick? Timo Werner. You think he's good? I I, I do I do, weirdly enough. Okay, okay. I, he's come Fair in. Enough. He's come. In, he's come in immediately and made an impact, even though it hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been banging goals in. But he's. It's just cool that he can come into a team pretty much immediately, uh, hit the ground running, make an impact at all. You know, a lot of players take time to learn a system, and he, there hasn't been much of that with him. It's just kind of like drop in, uh, and uh, yeah, he's not great. He's not the best player, but I don't. I don't. He's better than. I could. I don't want to be too controversial, but. No, Timo Werner. He's, he's, he's like, you know, when you've got a fire going, right, and you've got that bit of wood, you know, like a wood fire, obviously. Yeah. You've got that bit of wood. You're not quite sure of to bug it in to make the fire stoked up. That's yeah. what Timo Werner is. I don't think he's great, and I mean, I'm, I, no, I do, I do. His track record, his at Chelsea, it was bad. You know, he did a bad. You know, he, he wasn't a star player at Chelsea. That's you know to say the least. 
But he's done so well in Germany. I think that the Chelsea thing was just a smudge on his career. I don't know, Kuba, what type of numbers would he have to put up this year for you to not think that he's um, a bad, a, would be a bad transfer? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with Elliot. It's it's not about the numbers for me. It's you, you what, look at what you're seeing. When, you, when someone like Sonny gets the ball, I'm excited about the prospect of a goal. When Madison gets the ball, I'm excited about the prospect of a book of a goal. I don't get that feeling with Werner or with Johnson at the moment. They need to step up to that kind of level where that you've got expectancy about them doing something really good for the team. They're not yeah. there. Timo Werner was good about four I think, years ago. I think Werner is up here and Johnson is down here, if I'm being honest. Uh, when Werner gets the ball, I, I assume he's going to drive past a player or two and fizz across him, or at least where I don't feel like Johnson is necessarily going to be yeah, able to do that. The trouble with Werner's crossing is where's it going to go? Like you can put money on it hitting the floodlights as much as a player. Is it that mm. bad? I don't think he's not. It's not like he's Musa Sissoko out there. I mean, it's it, people act like he's an absolute donkey when I feel like he's he just that, happens that, to have a cheap that, release clause. That's, that's yeah. just it. I do put him on the same level as Musa Sissoko. Damn. They're, they're just not players that shouldn't be. No big team is going to go for that kind of player if they're looking to win something. I, yeah, I think Johnson crazy. will prove you wrong, Coover. I think Johnson has yeah. every every attribute to be a, a quality player. And I think we've seen it in the last few weeks. I know it's been a little bit stop-start. Um, but I think he, he's still only, what is he, 21, 22? He's still in yeah, he's, he's still incredibly young. Um, and I think getting used to 22, Chang, thanks. I think he's still getting used to the fact that he's with a much, much bigger club. But I think he fits the style and system of Ange Ball perfectly. Um, and I think, I think we've seen over the last six weeks or so that he's starting to believe that he's good enough. And I think he will be a really great player. Werner, I'm, I'm still out on Werner. You know he's got ability, but how long, you know, how long with a player of his age, he's, what is he, 28 or something like that? Yeah, he's 27. Yeah, I mean. 27. You know, uh, uh, he, he, uh, with with a young player, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say, look, they maybe take time to mature, to get used to their new environment. Much, much bigger club than Forrest. But Werner's been around the block more than once at yeah. club and international level. Um, yeah. He really does need to produce over the next uh, and he, 10 but he's, he's produced over the games he's been here. I just, I'll just pull up his stats because I feel like he's getting shortchanged. Uh... I don't know why I care so much, but uh, stats, 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 stats. The, the problem with the stats is you have to weigh it up on the hypothetical situation of what would another player have done in that same situation. Right. They might, yeah. have, much, they might have significantly better numbers. So yeah. oh, that's when I tend to disregard the stats. That, just look at what I'm seeing. And then I could play a game that of he's like. He's had so many chances to score, Colin. He's had so many chances, and he's missed. For, I would say he's missed nine out of ten of them. Mm. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. He, Ian's um, right, by the way, about Johnson. He, he is young enough. I, he's a sort of more of an unknown quantity at the moment. Yeah, yeah. and but it's clear. It's clear that Johnson has it. I, I look at Werner as a washed-up player we're taking a gamble on, but uh, Johnson is a youngster. He, he might Dang. well, he might well develop into something special for us with a bit of luck. Touch wood. Whenever I see the team sheet, I'm, I'm much happier when it's Johnson uh, on the bench and Werner playing, uh, at least to start out matches. But that's just me at this time, and I don't think Johnson, or sorry, Werner's like Lionel Messi, or even I, I just don't think that he's like washed up. And I think that he could absolutely play a role in our team. Um, but, but I mean, I definitely, I've been wrong before, uh, but we'll see. I, I'm excited to see come the end of the season uh, how much he's been involved in, you know, what contributions he's kind of put up. I know that it's not all about the numbers, but yeah. it is kind of. So we are probably going to sign him anyway because he's cheap as cheap. And he'll put, probably be a squad player. But that's the reality of it. But it's a shame that we are going to sign him because I don't think we can get better than him. Um, I just don't think he fits Ange Ball either. I don't think he's an Ange Ball player. 
and just looking supposedly for players like a player that'll take their man on one v one, like a better version of him uh, by the sounds of it. Some of the players that we're looking at. So I would argue maybe he he's not, I guess, the best quality. But to say that his style isn't suited for Ange Ball, I don't know if I can agree with that. I'm um, Colin. Colin, What's would it? you say T for you would Timo Werner be a starter if we bought him? That depends on the day, the team. No, I mean just generally, would he be a you know starting eleven? You know, more 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 often than not. So if we're in the Champions League. Or another European competition, he would be a starter about half the time, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm with Coover on this. I think Coover's Co suggesting there's no way. I mean, I think even with the squad now that we've got, um, I would be starting with uh, Rishi in the middle, Son left, and Johnson or um, Kupra Kulisevsky right, or uh, Decky right, and Johnson as first choice on either flank. Um, and I think that's the point. If we're going to mature as a club and move on, I don't think Werner is a starter now. And if we're bringing in better players, then he's sitting in the stand, not even on the bench. I think that's sort of where you're going with this, is it, Kuva? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the very fact we're even arguing over is Werner going to be a first team starter or a squad player, and we have res I have reservations about him even being a squad player. Mm. The fact that we're having these conversations yeah. sort of suggests what level he's at. Um, as a, an overall opinion, I think from the fan base, he is very divisive, yeah. though, isn't he? He is. He really is. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I think. I think there's a good player in there. I think he's already shown glimpses of it. Um, everyone says to give players time. He's been with us for a couple months, already producing. Um, so yeah, that's just me. Again, that you know. Uh, as for the Marcus Edwards thing, there was a really cool comment in here about that. We're, that's way back. But somebody said, and I liked it, that he was better suited. Hold on, let me. I don't want to misquote anyone. It was Audio Artisan. So big up Audio Artisan, by the way. Said Edward's ability and skill set is better suited for Ange Ball than BJ, Kulu, Solomon, and Werner. Um, that's mm -hmm. an insane thing. And I don't know enough about Ange Ball to, to refute that. Um, but it is something to think about, I guess, for sure. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that before we – anybody in the know? And I guess I'm sort of looking at Ian here because – Yeah, Ian, um – um, I, I'm sort of half half in agreement with that. Um, um, I know exactly where uh, Artisan is coming uh, there with his with his directness and his ability to move the ball quickly, which I still don't think we're doing anywhere near as much as Ange would want. Um, for that reason, Decky Decky is obviously a. Um, a high quality, uh, high quality player. I'm still, I'm not, still not convinced. I uh, said in June, I didn't think he was suited to to Ange Ball, and I'm still not. Johnson, I think is, but Werner and uh, Solomon. Um, well, I don't think we can say much about Solomon. I think actually Solomon could be an Ange Ball player, but who knows if he's anywhere near good enough because he's never fit, and that's that's a perennial problem with Tom. You know, how do we know if you're if you're any good? It's like the you know, cricket, anyone follows cricket, but it's like the cricket bats when being asked, you know, what sort of form are you in? You know, I don't know. I'm not in long enough to find out. And it's uh, it's a bit like some of the players that are constantly on our treatment table, utterly useless. Got to have players that are fit to play and be available for selection week in week out but i know what artisan saying with that that edwards could um you know could suit the style but my my question isn't his style is is if he's actually good enough yeah you're quite right my head must be worse than i thought because i'm agreeing with everything ian's saying <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah i love it the, the lobotomy is obviously working <laughs> that's right yes it's, 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 also the fitness, it's also the fitness <laughs> of the players as well. Because to play Ange Ball, you've got to be super fit. Because you have you're you're on the move twenty four seven, right? So some of our players can't handle it. They like they're they're whacked out at sixty minutes, and they have to be pulled off. They just can't handle the the, the type of football we're playing. You know, I think Yudogi can. I think Poro can, but he's playing in a right wing back position when we've got Kulu there I would have thought he would have pushed Poro into Kulu's position 
and bought a proper right back or put Stragoose in there. Because Stragoose has played um, right back. And then play play um, Kulu as a false nine. It will suit him better. Because then he doesn't have to do all that up and puff. Because Poro's fantastic at bombing down the wing and getting crosses in. We've seen it from him. Yeah, you know, it, it's Kulu, a shame. It's a shame that we lost. Uh, right Kulu's shown it. He's done it a couple times in the past few matches. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Ellie. It's not exactly his trademark or anything. Um, Scooby has a question in here about Levy, so I've started it because I feel like we all can't we can't talk about Levy right now. We gotta we gotta space that out. Um, what you got to ask yourself as well, Colin? Where have you seen Kulu play best on the wing or when he's played in midfield? Midfield, mostly, yeah. I mean, midfield for sure. Except I've seen, I don't know, I've seen him, I've seen him done some. I, yeah, no, I was gonna say I've seen him do some really good things on the wing too, though. You know, it's. It's tough. I'd say he's had just as many good games on the wing as he has in the middle, but he has played fewer in the middle. So I get what you're saying. Uh, and I don't think anyone here would argue. You guys, raise your hand. Think Kulu's better in the middle than he is on the wing? I personally okay. think he's better from the middle. Yeah. Me and Chang, me and Chang Kuva, Kuva says, eh, eh, it's CSE. Uh, and then, okay, all right, all right. Um, well, look, I see that El Tal Cockerel's in the house. He's in the building. He's around. Um, so come I think, on. I think, the, I think the argument with Kulu is that it's, it's a strange sort of situation we have because we know sometimes we're far too narrow and looking for some width on the right wing. We, he, if he's going to cut in, you'd expect Poro to sort of um, overlap him and offer some width that way. But it doesn't happen. And I... I can't believe it's ta purely tactical because ob obviously Ange must see that as well, that there's no width there. So what's going on? Is it Kulu not doing what he's supposed to? Is it Poro not doing what he's supposed to? I find it really puzzling that that would be an actual tactic. It's, I think you're so absolutely a million percent right and I don't like to be agreeing with you all afternoon either. But that's, that's right, they should be interchangeable. <laughs> If one goes one goes in and just or will you play with the inverted fullbacks? The in, playing with the inverted fullbacks is a, is a method of getting the ball forward in the first place. It it's, it doesn't mean that the the Poro and Udogi I, I can't I'm talking with my hands that can't be seen on the screen uh, have to stay in channels. The point being is they should be interchangeable and and come inside or outside. And I keep talking about that goal we scored against Liverpool when Poro went outside and delivered the cross for, I can't remember his name now, to stick through his own net in the 96th minute. Um, and that, sure, that's him. You know, where, where Poro got himself into an outside position oh, to Matic, deliver a really good cross. Matic. Matic put in his own goal. Yeah. Matic, yeah. Matic. Thanks, okay. Ellie. On, on, that that, side, that... on that side, there's no overlap. But on, on your doggy side, there's plenty of overlap. Yeah, you don't that's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good point. No, that's that's a good point. Um, real quick, guys, uh, I'm gonna awkwardly slam through some comments here. Um, so this is a good question from James, and I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that he doesn't mean long term. That he means starting right now today. If you had to pick a player to start, are you picking Johnson or Timo? And you're starting eleven. Uh, start with Kuva. Go, Johnson. Easy. Uh, Chang. I'm starting Werner and I'm keeping uh, Johnson as our super sub. Uh, I like that. There's actually a lot of that's 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 interesting. Um, and so we'll go to my man Ian. What do you, what would you say on this one? Who starts? Sorry. I I'm, I missed Colin. Sorry, my phone blast up with a with a business message. Oh, Sorry, you're good, buddy. No business. Yeah, is business, no, it's all right. Man. I can. It'll it'll wait till after the show. Go on. If you had to pick one of these two to start, Johnson or Timo. Uh, oh, it's no contest. No contest. It's Johnson. John, it's Every, Johnson. Oh, not a question for me. Dang, dang. And Ellie, what about you? I think it's going to be the same answer. Yeah, BJ. Dang, guys. <laughs> dang, dang. Well, I don't know. He, uh, he he was great for Wales the other day, says Kel. She was watching that. They did a watch along on their channel, He's I think. Got another puppy, didn't he? Um, so, yeah, <laughs> big, up to, big up to Johnson. I am way more of a Timo Werner fan than the rest of y'all. And once he does some important stuff for us, and he will. He already has. Uh, but once he does, I'll, I'll be here to say I backed him from the beginning. I was always a fan. 
Um, Kels is saying that he's a Patrick Bamford of Spurs by the sounds of it. I wouldn't say that because that's a given. Him, uh, Patrick Bamford's done a, <laughs> done a lot for Leeds. Um, no, I, I get that. I get that totally. You expect a lot more from Bamford. He had that one season where he banged in a load of goals. And then yeah, where well, I thought that we should have been in for him. It's, it's the same with Werner. Go back yeah. four or five years. He was sensational. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's still... I, I still have a hard time seeing the uh, what, like like what's I know that he's on semi high wages, but there's not really a reason not to sign him. Um, he's crap. No, he's not. He's he's just not sensational. There's there's a there's a big big spot between crap and sensational, and he's floating around somewhere in that middle in that middle section. Should that be where we're shopping? Should that be what we're aiming for? No, and I get that. Um, I'm just being realistic about it, and you know what I mean. And he's here; he can produce, he can he can score goals, he can he can assist goals. Ah, score goals is kind of a you know what I mean. He he he's shown that he ha- he I have seen him score, uh, and he can you know assist goals. I, it's just you just you, you need a play, you need a player like that. You, need, you, you need a player like that. You You'll get one. a long way with you. This is PR, man. I right, see. <laughs> I'm I'm available for the job. Um, so, um, who else? We've got Scooby asking all these hard hitting questions. Uh, Kane should have probably been sold when he was around 27. He tried to win stuff with Spurs. It was a bit unfair on him. Um, Scooby, um, that is an opinion that you have, uh, and I'm not sure if any of these guys hold it. Maybe, kind of, but. Uh, it, it ended how it ended, and and now he's off trying to win trophies somewhere else, and not having the easiest of times. So um, yeah, uh, I think I think one of the criticisms of the club over the last 10, 15 years is you look at Modric, Bale, Berbatov, Eric, even yeah, Carrick, Bale, all of whom moved on and were allowed to move on yeah for big money um but in fairness to um in fairness to to levy uh, and in fairness to kane as well he you know they both tried to make it work that he that he won trophies till in the end uh, uh, you know kane obviously wanted to leave he wasn't going to sign a new contract and you know, I, I don't think I don't think he should have been sold at 27. I think the uh, the, the Levy outers would have had uh, more than enough ammunition to say, you know, no ambition if we'd have let him go at 27. Um, don't I don't buy that at all. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's a very good point. Um, you know, we, we were kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't, and that and that whole Kane saga situation. You know what I mean? There was no. I think, I think with Kane in particular, he's one of those players. He's not going to be retiring at sort of 32, 33. He's he's never been based. This game's never been based on pace, mm. so he to play a lot longer. I think he's got time to even come back to the Premiership. I think he's got time in a couple of years to come back and break Shearer's record. Still, really good. Yeah. yeah, and he probably will do that, Cooper, as well. Yeah, probably imagine. right. Probably it's a way yeah. somebody else won it. Newcastle, Newcastle yeah. or some shit. Yeah, who knows where they'll be at that time. Uh, El Tel says pace kills, forget slow coaches. Um, pace does kill. You're so, right. So that's not a quote from Ayrton Senna then. Uh, I think I think it's I think he has it tattooed on his arm or something. He says he talks about pace kills a lot. Um, it sounds like it's time from his old something from his old days. And you know when he was running with a bad crowd, uh, but. Anyway, just kidding, Jose. You you never ran with a bad crowd, I don't think. Um, we've got some more questions for you guys. So, Ellie, did you see the quote from your man saying that, of course, I'm not happy with what's going on at the club. It's not a secret, but it's not something I make a fuss about either. I'm giving it all my, to show the coach that he should believe in me. That's pretty nice of, of Pierre to say. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I'm glad that he's not happy about it, but I'm also glad that he's... Oh, I, I I don't know. What do you do? You think that he was okay with this quote? Like he didn't, you know, he, he wasn't disrespectful or anything, from what I can find. Uh, it's so. like any player. If if you're not part of the starting eleven, it's not. It's hard because he was part of all the teams under Conte, under Nuno, under Jose. He was part of the team with Bentancur, two man midfield. 
and then suddenly Ange comes in and he's not flavour of the month and he doesn't fit his style of football and it's hard for him because he's a professional guy. He, lo- he loves the game. You can see he loves playing football. But yeah. with with, with Hoybier, he's he's just one of those things like you you can't always be flavour of the month. So he's been professional. He's been on the bench. He's come on. He's affected games as well. He's made one big boo boo against Newcastle, which led to a everybody's goal. going to remember that, but, Ellie. It's never going to yeah, get forgotten. You know, but the thing is, then he he counteracts it by coming on against Chelsea as the centre half and playing fabulous. And then he done that fantastic block against Burnley to keep us in the cup. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, we got Man City the next match. Thank you, Gary Mabbott, for that. Uh, but. He's, he's, he's stayed professional and he's only speaking his truth. He wants to play. Mm. He loves playing. He played for Denmark the other day, scored a goal. So he, he's out of favour and he knows his days are numbered. So he's, he's, he's going to move on him at the end of the season, probably. So he can get first team football. Yeah, I just I just thought it was a nice it was a nice thing for him to say business. because I don't want a player that's happy um, on the bench. It is. And, but they're, they're, they're a better midfielders than him. But I would argue that Basuma doesn't deserve his spot. And p- perhaps Pierre starts against Luton. That wouldn't be a bad call. Or even Benny starts. Yeah. Because I don't think Basuma's been pulling his weight. So, And he's been, he's been uh, loyal to Basuma. And uh, not loyal to Hoybier. Because... Mm. Hoybier, Hoybier has been he's played really well for us for two seasons he was very very good for us and now you know he's out of favour so but Ellie isn't the point though same similarly to when we're talking about um, 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 Timo Werner that if we want to get to the level that the panel want yeah. to and we believe now that the football side and the, the board want to get to then we simply need to be upgrading players like uh, Hoiberg, who does nothing wrong, uh, and his attitude to 100%, and, and, and Werner. No, I agree with you, right? But at the moment, we've got him, haven't we? So We've got both, that, yeah. Yeah, we, we've got them both, so we've got to use, utilise them in some sort of manner. But being on the bench, it must be hard for him because he was, he was the starter all the time under Conte. With mm. Bentonport, and you saw when they when they came on against Fulham, you could see there was a very good understanding there, and yep. they can offer they can offer something different until they. And he's going to move on anyway, and I do agree with you. There are much better players than Hoybier out there that we can bring into the club. All right, but at the moment he's out of favour. He's on the bench, and he's just got to accept it. You work hard to try and impress the coach. But mm. he's just got to accept that he's not Andy's type of player. I, I mean, what bothers me is um, since they've come back from tournaments injuries, Bissouma, Bentoncourt and Madison have been far too inconsistent. And I think that explains partly why our form hasn't been as good as it, as it should have been. All three of them, even even Madison, he, great assist for England on uh, on his little cameo on uh, Tuesday night. Yeah. He's really not, um, as we say up here, set the heather on fire since he came back from his injury. No, yeah, he hasn't. I mean, well, Kane, he, Kane used to be like that as well, didn't he? Um, if he had a long injury layoff, he took a few games to get back, yeah. into, back into it. Yeah, I think um, with Madison, he takes a risk and he play him back into form. Don't you think, Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Absolutely. Uh, real quick, look who's in the chat, guys. It's it's Nick, a.k.a. Barry. What is up, Nick? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, I know I haven't gotten to every single comment. I am not as yeah. good at that as El Tell is. But I'm trying to say hi to everybody that I see that pops in. Uh, and speaking of people popping in, look who it is. It was a while ago, but it's Kate uh, from Just Go yeah. Love Spurs. Big oh, up, God. everybody. Uh, we've got David Clark in the house. Uh, from from Leicester, David says Bamford is old news again. Injury is the reason why he is now totally ineffective, uh, even in the championship. He says, um, "What else we got going on? What else we got here?" Yeah, Bam- Bamford's a strange one, isn't he? He's shown, like I said, he had that one season I remember in the Premiership where he banged in loads of goals, 
looked a good, really good player. Um, nothing really changed. It just suddenly wasn't there anymore. It's yeah. really sort of baffling. His, it didn't look like it was sustainable, the goals he was scoring. I'll be honest. He didn't He didn't look – you know, sort of that's how Kane looked. I think that's why everyone said Kane was a one-season wonder because he looked awkward and his movement wasn't super athletic-y and he's not um, – you know he's he's he doesn't I don't know he he's just not an, he doesn't look like an out and out athlete in the way that he moves. Bamford was kind of the same, kind of like the same awkward like uh, this to his run and and his form, and um, yeah, it, it didn't look sustainable to me. So I, I I'm surprised in that you know he he looked he was banging him in and you you wouldn't expect there's somebody to lose that completely, but at the same time, some of his goals looked fluky. But that's just me. Uh, so that's just me. What did, what did you think? Did you think that, I mean, did you expect him to be still banging him in? You thought that was the beginning of something great? Or did it look like a flash in, a pan, flash in the pan to you too, Koopa? Well, Kane. Uh, no, uh, you know, uh, why can't I think of He's right up but, here. Uh, um, Bamford. Yeah, Patrick Bamford. Um, yeah, he, he, he looked like a good all-round sort of player. He was just involved in the attacks well. He really suited what... Leeds needed at the time, and um, I thought he'd kick on from it, but just didn't happen. Ha- that, that's that's been the story for a lot of players, though, hasn't it? Oh yeah, um, I mean, there's only, for, only Fernando, so many can make it. I mean, it's a for, tough. Even even the likes of Fernando Torres when he had that brilliant run at, at, the, at Madrid, and then coming to Liverpool, and then he had that injury, and when he came back from the injury, it was it was just gone. His 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 yeah. career was just on a complete nosedive then. Um, well done to Liverpool for selling him to Chelsea for so much at that point. Mm-hmm. Everybody could it. see it good if the player Chelsea. wasn't there anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we've got so many nice people in the chat today, guys. Um, Interesting comment from David Clark in the ch- in, in the chat about... What, about what minute? Does it say what minute it came in? Yeah, I'm just trying to find it because it's gone. A bit, but basically saying he's from Leicester and the gripe with uh, Leicester supporters. There you go. If people can read it themselves. It's just yeah. an interesting, an interesting observation. I know David's got uh, you know a lot of oh. interesting things to say when he's when he's in the in the chat. Definitely, yeah. And so it takes mass, and everyone's gripe is that it takes a while to get back to fitness. Yeah. That's cool. That's at least hey, at least at least he's on track. At least he's not. At least this isn't something weird. You know, we know he will be back to full fitness. Um, so that's that's a good thing. I think I think David I think it goes to show the um, lack of. Uh, creativity in our squad that if he yeah. is struggling to come back, we can't we can't sort of cope with it. it. It's a big hole in the team when he's uh, not not at his peak. Which brings you back to Marcus Edwards, I guess, as one of your options. Yeah, you say that though, too far. Marcus Edwards I... or Timo Werner? I just thought of that. Marcus <laughs> oh, Edwards, Edwards, you... Edwards, Edwards can play football. Man, you... Oh, I think you, I think yeah. you have like a. Are you? Do you just not like us Germans? It's it's that, isn't it, Gooby? You know, I... there's, there's some great German players, obviously. Um, <laughs> He's just me, not one of them. Me and my German compatriot well, here. The thing is, right, with with Madison, right, we can create. It's just we're not finishing the chances. When he's on, we finish them. Because I think he creates more opportune chances. You know what I mean by that? He creates more goal scoring chances that are easier to score. Like that yeah. flick he done to Romero. Put it right on his head on a sixpence. It was easy for him to score. Whereas when we create other chances, it's a little bit tougher because they, they haven't got the vision of Madison to create that opportune chance. There's, there's kind of a it's a long term thing I've said about um Kyle War, Walker as well. However good he was for us when he was with us, um, when he'd get forward and put the ball into the box. He wasn't the sort of player that would pick at pinpoint a, 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 a teammate with a pass. He just put it into somewhere he knew was a dangerous zone, and it's up to the uh, forward to get yeah. onto that. I don't yeah. even see that with Werner. I see him. It's I, I see a lot of his crossing very much like his shooting. I don't see any real conviction in it. He's just sort of hitting it across. He, what he's good at is beating his man and then doing a cross. But if it's going straight into the first defender or nowhere near any other forward, what's the point? It doesn't affect anything. I'm just saying that every other player we give, we say give him time to learn the system, give him time to learn the other players. You know what I mean? So I guess we kind of, I mean, don't we have to do the same here and give him time to learn, you know, when players are going to be making runs 
these other players well, have he's, had... he's got a 10 game audition for the rest of the season hasn't he absolutely yeah. and he has he has to step it up i'm just saying i i bet if there was a way for me to bet on like if he would be his first player there probably is i could probably find that somewhere uh you know for him to you know a bet for him to be his first player um come next season i would put money on it big money we're grabbing him like you said he's so cheap he's so cheap how can we not um guys the athletic says that we're planning on Mm-hmm. Uh, some exits for some long-serving scouts as part of a staff restructure, which then goes with apparently Tottenham's mission is to get business done as early as possible this summer for the majority of names they have in mind and positions they want to cover. Um, someone says that they think we could, it, it was actually um, – uh, what's that guy's name? I'll find it. But uh says we think we could see three or four uh, players come in. Um, so with, with those two things in mind, getting rid of long-serving scouts – and then getting business done early. Do you think that we're maybe going to dip into some markets that we haven't been in before? You know, we have long been getting players from Italy. I don't really think that's going to change with Don Paratici uh, doing his thing. But yeah, these two things just seem kind of related to me. They weren't in the same article at all. Um, but had you heard about this, anybody? The, the yeah. You know, the exits for the scouts? And, uh, I, read, I read the athletic. So is it Bloomfield or Broomfield? Someone like that has been with the club a long time. He's going um, yeah. and, and, and a few others. Um, just to f- fill you in on that. I mean, what, what the article said, Colin, was that the club is moving much more towards a, an analytical um, approach to signings. Perfect. I get the impression that these guys are... You know, maybe sit on, uh, sit on, sit, yeah, yeah. Sit on the chair with the tick boxes and what have you, and uh, um, and watch players, and, and we're moving to a more sophisticated um, system. Um, I'll, let me, let me, I'll let me. I've started, so I'll finish, as they say. Um, there's a, there's a lot of criticisms of of the chairman. And one of them um, that I would always make is that a lot of his thinking has been um, short term, hasn't been joined up, hasn't been a coherent plan of where he wants to get the club and how he wants to get the club to where he thinks it ought to get to, which leads to the conclusion for a lot of people, and maybe they're right, that he doesn't really have ambition. It's purely about the money. Um, I suspect that some of the, the protests and what have you have shaken him up a bit. Um, um, and what I think that the, with the people like Lange and uh, um, um, the guy who's come in as the 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 the, the, the other Scott guy, Lange, the I'm Australian sure, fellow, um, that that have come in, that there does appear for the first time to be proper long-term strategic thinking about where we're going as a club, what we're trying to do, and in the longer term, the kind of players we're trying to identify to fit the model. It suggests to me that they think Ange is a long-term appointment, and that's been something that's been been, been, been lacking. Um, so if I look at it in that, in, you know, in, in, in that context, then I think it's encouraging. And I think if we've got scouting people that aren't looking and bringing and recommending the kind of players that the manager and the the football the football board, if I can call it that, the football management team are, are looking at, then it's best they go and we have everybody singing from the same song sheet on this. Very, very well put. Because yeah, you're you're right. Um, Longa or Lange or whatever you have, or you pronounce yeah. his name, uh, he he was always going to be you know more more uh, analytical and, and data oriented. Uh, so that's a good point. Maybe they're just getting out some of the the older fellas uh, who who are kind of more old school with the with the ways that they do it. Uh, but it'll be good to have everybody on the same page. Uh, you know, it's sad that it's honestly it's sad that people are losing their jobs. Um, but hopefully they'll be able to grab another one and, and find another. You know, I'm sure that. Uh, you know, that hopefully they can find another scouting job somewhere. Um, but it, it will be good to have everyone on the same page, sort of in the way that we've even got all of the, the youth teams playing kind of Ange ball, so to speak. Uh, the same, you know, football on the kind of on the same wavelength. Uh, it'll be good to have everybody on the same wavelength. Um, so this this person, I didn't put the whole quote in here because I got lazy, but they were basically saying three or four players early. It was either Ali G or it was Paul O'Keefe uh, that said this. Um, so, you know, take it with a little grain of salt, but they, they both get information. Um, if, if only three, 
I guess four. I, I really don't want it to only be three. If four players came in, um, you got to think we would, we're going to need another central defender. Um, we need a striker. Uh, bad. <laughs> we need a good striker. Uh, other two positions. I, I guess it depends on who leaves. You know, um, Ian, Ellie, Chang. What do you what do you, what do you guys think we need? If we were to grab four players, two of them defender and a striker. Where else? Fullback? Fullback seems like we can desperately use something. another left back. Yeah, definitely. Um, First and foremost, I think we need a long-term uh, answer uh, for the uh, striking department. We really need to fill that uh, hurricane-shaped fill, that hurricane-shaped hole uh, in our striking department because I honestly think Richarlison isn't going to cut it. Not because he's uh, come out recently with all this... Uh, uh, revelations about his uh, mental health and uh, whatever uh, troubles he's having uh, behind the scenes but I think that in order to properly challenge we need someone banging at least at the very least 20 odd goals uh, or more uh, per season and Richarlison's numbers uh, just isn't cutting it and as much as I would like to see Sun uh, up front for us I also feel that uh, age is catching up to him he might not be the uh, uh sprightly spring chicken he was uh maybe six seven years ago uh under pochettino so the striking the striker department the fourth department will be the first uh to be looked at and then oh, yeah. maybe look into a proper winger a proper uh white man that can uh deliver the kind of crosses uh kane would have easily gobbled up uh every other uh game uh that this uh, striker is uh that this uh, winger is uh, floating in the crosses someone someone along the lines of a gareth bill if if someone like him is uh, available uh in the open market and that if we want to prove ourselves as uh, ffp champions or uh, get something out of know, that at least flex yep. our muscles exactly exactly so if we have the finances if we have balance the books well enough, I don't see why we can't get both a winger and a striker that can make us real contenders. This Just fill in these two departments. The rest of the uh, positions, the midfield, the midfielder who is going to be uh, the uh, long-term replacement for Hoybeer, another uh, centre-back uh, that's going to be cover for either Van de Ven or Romero if Ashley Phillips doesn't make the grade. And also maybe another wing-back uh, seeing as how Jet Spence is uh, pretty much on his way out, I would really love nothing more than to get Morgan Gibbs White from Nottingham Forest and use Jet Spence as a part player exchange for Morgan Gibbs White. Although that doesn't really uh, uh, solve the uh, problem of the uh, fullbacks or the in inverted wingback uh, situation, but yeah, someone someone who can uh, you know replace uh, Ben Davis uh, in the long run and also fill uh, the void that's going to be left by Jet Spence very soon. That's going to be critical as well. So there you have it, the four positions. A forward or a striker, another winger. Uh, 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 when I say a winger, I mean a certain upgrade or rather a surefire upgrade over uh, Johnson and uh, Timo Werner and a midfielder, a midfielder to replace Hoybier and uh, another fullback to uh, fill in for the uh, departing Ben Davis and Jet Spence. I literally forgot that we had Ashley Phillips and who is the other? Who is the other? Dorrington? Uh, yeah, is that Dorrington. the other? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's the player. Yeah, yeah, but they're both around the same age and both like bigger yeah. than a brick shit house. And, and yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot about those two guys. There's a chance that we might not even... I mean, if, if either of them can step in, we just need a fourth center back right now. But yeah. the thing is, if we don't if we don't strengthen at fullback, then we have to rely on our center backs to fill in at fullback. And I know that some of them can, yeah. but I don't want that. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want that. So I feel like the, um, this talk. Where where is Spencer? Colin is he? Is it Genoa? Is Genoa. that? Genoa. Yeah, Genoa, Genoa, Genoa. Whatever. I, I mean, I'm hearing rave reports about him. They I, love him. They love him there. I really like him as a player, and I, if he's got if he can get his head right. He would be he would be uh, absolutely in my team. 
Um, absolutely in my team. I'd play Poro further forward. That's just, uh, I think he'd be really good for Angeball. Uh, Chang, add into your list. We need another goalkeeper. Uh, we need a backup Shit, goalkeeper. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, we don't have a goalkeeper Forster, worth You know, Forster's nearly my age now. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's getting, he's getting I wanted. I honestly wanted to nominate David De Gea. I'm surprised no one's actually gone for him if he, if he is indeed a free agent. On, on, although he is uh, aging as well, but for what, 31, 32 years of age, I think he still can be a good uh, squad member. But he'll want to be a, he'll want to be a number one it. somewhere still. I think he still can be a number one, and so we wouldn't have him over yeah, for I, I, I personally think Josh Keeley's going to be our number two because he's, he's making waves in the, in the academy and he's playing out of this world. And he, he's, he's. I'm all for that. Place. Yeah, I, I think he's he's going to be our number two. I think he's going to be elevated, and I think Austin and Whiteman stays are numbered. Maybe they'll keep Austin as a third mm. choice and and get rid of Whiteman because he he's not going to cut the mustard. He's too small to be a goalie as well. He's not physically. He's too small in his height. He's just not. He's not. He's not the real thing. So I think they'll move him on. But in regards to Sonny, though, I found out something very interesting. What did you first find out? Four, yeah, four, first four seasons were much worse than his presently, the four seasons just gone. So he's been with us eight seasons. In mm. the first four seasons, he scored 44 goals. In the, the last four seasons, he scored 68 goals. And his assists have improved as well. So he's actually getting better with age, not going backwards. Love it. You got to love it. Yeah, that, that, that yeah. doesn't surprise me, though. Yeah, uh, because Son Sonny's not slowing down anytime soon. So I, we, yeah, we, I, we agree. Need, I agree with Chan, though. We need someone who can get just as many goals or if more, if not more than uh, Sonny. Because Sonny, he, he's, a, he's a steady goal scorer. But he's consistently around about 16 to 18 goals a season. So where, where do you guys think the best place for him is, is it, Ellie? Uh, we'll go with you. Is it the wing or is it is it playing up front? Well, if we get a proper number nine on the we wing, him back on the wing. cutting in and scoring goals for us still. And his assist record is remarkable. For a striker, he's, he's, he's actually assisted in the last four seasons 31 goals. That's fantastic. Yeah, Some, that is pretty crazy, yeah. to be honest. Right. Yeah. So, I think we need a, an out-and-out goal scorer. I, I like Blahovic at Juventus because he's a proper, proper mm. strong number nine. And look at look who wins the league, Haaland, a proper strong number nine. And they they win the league, you know. And before yeah. that, before that, they had the shorter striker in Aguero, but he was powerful, very strong centre forward. And he played that centre forward role brilliantly. All right. And all the top teams throughout history have always had a number nine who's a very strong, powerful player. And I think it would suit Angeball. I don't, you know, you do need somebody nippy as well, but we can have a, a player like who's a false nine, someone similar to maybe Defoe or Robbie Keane, who can, who's in and around the box, who can finish as well. And then have Sonny on one. Um, but, Brennan Johnson on the other side, yeah, and then another creative midfielder, and I, I think Poro would be best suited as a, a proper winger, not a right wing back. I think he's fabulous going forward. I know his stats show that he's good defensively, but I I, I prefer him attacking because he's fabulous when he comes out with the ball, um, and then yeah. and then get maybe get um. I think if if they promote Josh Keeley, I think we'll be all right. Um, but I think we need another left back as well to cover your doji, just as good as your doji to give him, give him pressure, so that he doesn't think that spot is his. I almost don't know if left back or right back is more pressing in my view. But but guys, Chang has got to go to sleep. He has to work very soon. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm ashamed to say how soon he's got to work and how how long oh. he was with us. Chang, uh, I love Chang. you, buddy. Always you look a pleasure, like my man. You look like Vincent okay. Jansen in that kit. It reminds me of Vincent Jansen. That's how I, that's how I get the vibes. Um, I'll at least give him a better player. Paulinho. <laughs> Paulinho. All right. Yeah. Um, those are some players I remember from, from that kit. But, hey, Chang, you have a good sleep, brother. Uh, good day at work tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, man.
Big up. Well, okay, guys. thanks a lot for having me on. Mr. Uber, Mr. Math, uh, Queen Ellie, and uh, Mr. Sivas have a uh, great show ahead, and uh, I look forward to seeing each and every single one of you uh, very soon, whether it's for a watch along, uh, another live stream, or even, uh, you know, uh, one of these uh, member call ins. Uh, have a fabulous Thursday ahead, and come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't Chang the best? I love him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting chat, interesting comments in the chat about Alex Scott. Um, oh, he, yeah. we, we were really heavily linked with when he was at Bristol City. I think he went to Bournemouth. Is he getting a game at Bournemouth uh, to the people that I haven't seen much of him at Bournemouth? He, if you ever look at him on, on YouTube, Colin, he, there's a lot of the Gascoigne about him, the Paul Gascoigne's about him. Um, the way, but I, I haven't seen him getting much of a game for Bournemouth. He, uh, he, had some, he, had some injury he had some injury problems, but I'm, right, I, live okay. in, I live in the area, so I've got a few mates who are Bournemouth fans, and they, yeah. they think very highly of him. Brilliant. I, I'd have loved him at Tottenham. And I, yeah. we, I mean, I remember discussing, um, um, Ellie was talking about Vlaovic, and uh, I remember me and, me and Brian Daigle talking about him a little while ago and thinking how good he'd have been alongside Kate just because he works so hard. Um, this Alex Scott kid's always, so always one ball. step ahead. I'm watching him right now. He's always one step ahead of everybody else. He's, he's yeah, got his I, next move. His next move is playing out before he even receives the ball. I love players like that. Yeah. Lo lovely, well, I, lovely stuff. He played 15 oh, oh. times for Bournemouth this season. He scored one goal, which was against us, and one assist. Um, and he's just picked up two yellow cards. That, that's not too bad. You know, but obviously... He, I don't know whether he's actually started all those 15 matches. Right. I, no, I don't think he has. Play. I don't think he, he didn't start against us. He came off the bench, didn't he? And he, he was very impressive when yeah, he came off. Kind of chaotic. I like it. I mean, I, I, I agree. I think he's a really, really good player. And the Vlaovic is a really great call. I would love to see him in a Spurs shirt. Love it. Yeah. He's get it. He's gettable yeah. this summer, I think, if we really wanted him. But I don't know if yeah. Ange does. He did, he's, I don't know. he's got that high quality sort of presence in the box that um, we're we're lacking since Kane. Yeah, so agreed. Like, yeah. How's his how's his hold up play? Honestly, I, I I'm asking because I don't know it's, enough it's, about it. He doesn't drop deep like Kane used to, but he he stays in the box. But it, just as a target man, having that there, he's able to yeah, like shield the it, ball, it, knock it down to others. It's um, kind of a Marilyn Fellaini uh, for United kind of thing. Uh, you were, you just oh, he he was better than you know, Fellaini. You know what I mean? But I guess I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. a, a plan B in one person. You know what I mean? Like a, a second He's option, just will throw in one guy. Fellaini has more hair, Ellie. Uh, yeah. I, so I guess I'm thinking like sort of like what Fernando Llorente. Whenever we played Llorente and we didn't have any other plans, so we'd throw to so we'd throw Llorente on and he would just head it down for people. Is Vlahovic that kind of a player? Well, he's he's played 25 times, scored 15 goals and four assists. Not bad. Not no. bad. A player no, who bad. had an injury last year as well, so he's come back from injury and he's impressing again. He's a oh, can, I, can, I just, can, I, can I just say about Jed Spence as well, since we've got a lot of our, our, our Leeds friends uh, in the chat as well. I um, yeah. was talking to them the other night about about him and um, there, uh, some of the revelations they were coming out with uh, about Jed Spence's attitude. If, I get it, if I've got it right, it's things like he didn't go to the hospital to see the kids that he was, he was supposed to and yeah, that was refused one of to things. give up any of his wages for charity. Yeah. Um, I think he was really bad at timekeeping, and then yeah. he had a disciplinary hearing. He was even late for that, and the, most oh, almost, all, almost all of them unanimously were saying he's a bad egg. They don't, they'd never want him at the club. Mm -hmm. So I think Damn. that's that's quite a major thing to uh, uh, weigh into the conversation about Jed Spence. How, but it, how old is he? I'll look it up. Old like enough, old, old, old enough not to be that big of a dickhead. He's twenty three. Jesus. Well, I don't know. I, I was a, I was a pretty big dickhead till I was 25, you guys. I turned 25 and instantly became like a better person. And so maybe that happens to everybody. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I used there's, to not there's, be a cool guy. I always say as a bloke you don't grow up till about 35, 40, something like that. When I turned 25, it was literally like I woke up one day Kuva and I go, "What the fuck have I been doing?" And I went to my mom and I was like, "Mom, I'm really I was like, "Mom, I'm really sorry." 
I'm like, something, <laughs> something's <laughs> wrong in here. Your I, I really did. I was like, Mom, something's wrong in here. I'm, it's, it's good now, but oh, oh my God. I'm with you on that one. I grew up with seven boys, and I know where you're coming from. Yeah, one day it'll just, just get a lot better. Um, so. on, on as, on as for Sonny, I think he does need to play on the left. I think we do need a, a proper centre forward, traditional style, at least have that part to his game. Um, uh, the closest that we got at the moment is Richarlison. Um, so I'd prefer to see Sonny playing off his uh, off his shoulder sort of thing. Um, not not as a wide left, but that playing that kind of inverted forward role. Yeah. All you need to do is get yeah. Sonny with the ball at his feet in and around the box. He's going to score goals. I think he's a fantastic yeah. player. Um, and we should treasure him because we won't have him all that yeah. much longer. He's getting on a bit now. In football, in terms, yeah, but I think I think he'll play quite a bit. I think let me get this stupid thing off here. But I think he'll play, he'll play quite a bit longer, uh, and he'll he'll kind of Ronaldo his game. Uh, he's he's, know, he's so not it's... he's not losing his pace, but he's losing his stamina, isn't he? He's, he said yeah. it himself. He can't just charge up and down the pitch. All Bale day. Bale said the same thing too. Game. Whenever he came back, Bale was like, yeah, "Hey, you know, true. I don't, I can't, I can't do this as long," and and they're all kind of coming. Bale and Sonny kind of have molded their game off of Ronaldo's game. I think that's not unfair to say uh, or too crazy to yeah. say. And, uh, and I'd it, like to offer the, the contrast there between Sonny and Timo Werner, just how startling it is. Sonny, they're just very different that, players. Sonny, I consider to have a sniper scope on his boots. Timo Werner's boots are sort of triangular prisms. Okay, so to me, there's like a to me there's like a hierarchy of players, like a triangle, and Sonny's at the tippity top. And Werner is on, he's you know he's on the he's on the curve you know he's on the angled line but he's just not they're obviously different caliber of players and I'm not saying that I think Timo Werner is awesome I guess I'm coming from this is a guy who who watched uh, you know a lot of Aaron Lennon and a lot of you know what I mean I, I just think that he's he's good enough to contribute Kuba is he good enough to be a starter should he be a starter no uh, but he's definitely good enough to contribute and especially if we're in multiple competitions I think you know it's not a bad not a bad pickup also speaking of not a bad pickup if you would like this t-shirt of a picture of arteta crying uh let me know i'll send you the link you can buy one uh, i will see that face at the end of the season oh we will i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure whenever they fumble the bag again because he's yeah. always got a smirk on his face i just hope man city batter them oh yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> me too um, Colin, can, can I ask, are we all in agreement, because it was chat again, stuff in the chat, and it, it, we really discussed it, that the Saudis, uh, again, are going to come back in or going to come in for Ricarlison in the summer. Yeah. Are we all agreed that if we got £60 million for him, we should uh, bite the hand off and, and oh, yeah. start again with our forward line? £60 yeah. million is a lot of money. That's a lot of money, yeah. yeah. Take it, for sure. You get a Vlahovic for 60, you get a Vlahovic for 60 million this summer. I know. I wouldn't just bite the hand off. I'd be up to the shoulder with rapid intensity immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, same. You'll be same. there with the chocolates and flowers, Kuva. <laughs> take him, <laughs> take him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know what? he's not—he's not an awful player, Richardson. But we can do better. Exactly, he's exactly—he's just not quite at that caliber. And I get what you're saying. So if, if I'm saying that about him, how can I say that uh, Werner should be in the squad? Because they both—I don't know. So, so for this season, he and Werner have both produced to a certain extent. I feel like they're both playing at like their peak, um, and and they can't really get any better. Uh, and and you talked about Johnson, and Johnson hasn't you know hit his ceiling yet. Um, you're talking to me like I'm talking myself into thinking your way, and and I'm believing it. But for this season, I've just been impressed with, with what Werner's been able to do with limited time and limited you know minutes on the pitch. Uh, I've been impressed with what Richarlison's been able to to do, and I feel like even in the face of adversity, even though they're fighting against themselves, kind of in their own limitations, they're doing a pretty good job this season, and it's been good for us. But yeah, we do need to upgrade on both of them. Um, so you've, Kuva, you've just helped me change my own mind thank you um it's the, it's the bigger picture colin we're, yeah we've, we've done it for years trying to um justify having average players at the club um, mm. we, we're all guilty of it at times we've all had favorites um i mean if i'm really harsh i'd even say it about aaron lennon i don't yeah. think he lived up to what what he should have been no no he didn't i think that's why i have uh, maybe my uh ambitions aren't very high because i'm used to i'm used to players like that you know where spurs used to be uh not not talking any shit spurs always kind of just overperformed a little bit uh that was that was their thing 
you know um they were better than the sum of their parts a lot of the time um well so. luckily luckily we got big and in place now and uh it looks like the board are starting to do things to fit what he needs we'll see after the summer but um mm. as, as usual as far as i'm concerned we start next season and, and the quad is on yeah absolutely yeah. Every, it's on every season until it's not it, you know um <laughs> It's on every season until it is not. Here's the one I wanted to show everyone. If you're looking for a great shirt, guys, uh, there is another wonderful shirt. Uh, that it's the misprinted version, so you know you got a special one. Um, but, but yeah, guys, um, totally agree. Totally agree. Oh, there's something in my private chat. It's not so private if I tell everybody. Um, is that one of your family members, Colin? Sporting it. Oh no, uh -huh. Ginger! I get the joke now. No, no, just some just some <laughs> random person on on this website, but could be right. We do look, we do kind of look <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I but put the ginger hair. I just thought maybe she's a family member. Oh <laughs> shit! No, no, this is this is oh, stock yeah. thing. Um, but but guys, uh, Potomac's got a question and big up Potomac. I haven't said big up yet. I put some of your stuff up, but I haven't seen you in a hot minute. So really nice to have you here. So this question to the panel, why is Mason still around the first team? Why is he our set-piece coach? I think our set-piece coach is that Yednak fella. Isn't that right? No, actually, Mason is. That's mm. what we said the other day. About that is, a that is stupid. Ago, they said Mason is. That is stupid. Then I don't know. I don't know. I, I could have sworn that Mile Yednak or whatever his name is was the, was the set-piece coach. Um, so I, I guess I'll throw this to Kuva first to, if you, if you want to. The, the only explanation I've got for it is um, we did him a favour after a horrendous injury he, he suffered, of course. He's, he was, he was pop and I think he's just popular at the club. I think yeah. players and staff like him. Maybe I he's think doing that's a good the only job. reason, really. Because um, yeah. other, otherwise it made no sense. Clearly, our set pieces have um, gone to hell since he's taken over with them. Um, is sentiment yet again going to hold us back at this, at this club? I would have Graham Roberts as our set piece coach, not not Ryan Mason, no. because he he's been a defender, he's been uh, a, a defensive yeah. midfielder as well. So I almost think. And Ryan Mason about. hurt his head jumping up to head a ball too. I I I know that the, obviously he's not doing it, but uh, uh, touchy subject. I feel like maybe. Um, it's just one of those things. You need the defender. I think yeah. you need a defender who's who's lived the lived and walks the walk and talk the talk. You know, have somebody who's yeah. and Graham Roberts, he's in and around our club as an ambassador. Why isn't he on the coaching staff? He was a fabulous player for us. Yeah. Much more yeah, than Ryan does, Mason. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily he's gonna be a great coach for it though, does it? And like vice versa, sometimes really nothing players make good badges. coaches. So. That's so I true. I don't even know if he's got his coaching badges, but if he has, I would employ him to be our, our fuck. I'm sorry, language. I'd rather have Ben Davis as our set piece coach once he hurries up and gets his badges. Um, but anyways, he's got uh, him, isn't he? He's, he's got getting him. some. He's got some. He's got I don't know. Great for badges. Yeah, yeah. He's. he's I, I knew he'd been working on them. Uh, how would you guys feel about Ben Davis at the club in a coaching capacity at some point? Um, I heard he's a pretty. Heard he's a pretty smart dude. You've already been asked this, I think, by me yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what he's going to be like as a coach, so um, I'm, I'm okay with it. He seems, he seems an intelligent footballer. He's, he's, like I said the, yesterday, his, his biggest handicap is his pace. Yeah, but that's and, not going to matter when it comes to coaching, is it? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open yeah. to it. If he's good enough, do it. Yeah, it's not a sackable offence to be too slow to put the cones out, is it? That's right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I, I'd like I'd like it because I just like having him at the club. I don't know. I think he's been a great servant. Um, you know, not going to get a testimonial because apparently we don't do testimonials anymore. Um, they get paid enough, don't they? So that's true. I I just I just it. like seeing old school players come and and you know what I mean. I I, I just love the matches. Um, that's that's it. That's really what I miss. Um, but but yeah, Sco Scooby asks sixty million for a Charleston. What have they been smoking? Uh, they got that good stuff over there. That's where the good stuff comes from, man. Um, and then <laughs> Ryan G said he'd take Richie at Wolves if he was about 20 mil. David Clark says he can't trap a bag of cement. Oh, we know. Oh, we know. Um, 
<laughs> some funny uh, comments coming in. There are there are some <laughs> funny ones. Um, look at this one too from Altel. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be one that really gets people. Uh, well, real quick, Scooby says, "I you can have him. We've got a few more in the warehouse. Welcome. I'll put the kettle on." And they said, <laughs> "I got a lovely antique digital clock with fifteen numbers and four hands. To you, sixty million. I shouldn't. That's totally that's that's above my head. Like it went over my head, but I knew that somebody would get it." Um, so good stuff. But your Scooby. first quote there was selling selling son to the Saudis for a hundred million. I mean, with the best will in the world, I can't see the Saudis coming up with a hundred million for for son. You can't. You don't uh, think so? No. Nah. Yeah, so. He, he's know. thirty-one, isn't he? He is. Yeah. With a year of his, has he got a year left on his contract? Mm -hmm. But I think he would he would gladly sign another one. I, I, don't, um, I don't think the Saudis are going to be going quite as wild as China did yeah. for that little period where they were buying everything. You know, Hulk, Hulk and Hulk yeah. and uh, yeah, all, every, all those other places. Dembele. So yeah, what do you guys think realistically that they might, that if they were to offer for Sun, what do you think the offer would look like, and what would it have to be for you to take it? He's he's, he's priceless, Sonny. I wouldn't take nothing for him. No, nah, we're not selling him. He's gonna retire here. I kind of think you're yeah. right, Els. Yeah. yeah, I think I need to make a sunny shirt. I'll be. I'll work on one of those. Um, uh, I think the sunny you've got to factor into that as well is how much revenue do we make from the Asian market, the South oh East, Southeast oh Asian God. market. I, I, you know, unfortunately, football is is a business, and it's just one of those uh, things that would need to be taken into account. Um, the lost revenue from shirt sales and uh, um, you know tours to the to the Far East and whatever what have you, on top of the uh, um, on top of any incoming transfer fee. But but the point being, if you're playing somebody like Son to make you know for, to satisfy the Asian market, who's not good enough for the team, um, um, that's one thing. But Sonny is good enough for the team and is likely to be for the next two or three years. Yeah. Agreed completely, uh, and and I like I was saying, I, I think that his game will change. I think that he we will see him in the middle more, uh, where he doesn't have to do as much running, where his little burst of speed can do him well uh, in the middle there. He just has to get past you know some center backs. Um, Coos, was, is there an amount of money you would accept for him? Oh, it's always an amount of money, but I, I guess I guess I guess what is it? Is it a lot? A little? Um, it would depend who you could get with the uh, money you. You, you receive mm -hmm. for him. That's um, That's if fair. we can get a, if we can get an absolutely awesome uh, replacement, I don't know who it would be at the moment. I've kind of got out the habit of picking players. I think I want the Spurs now because they're never going to happen. And um, I'm more sort of holding back and just see who we do get, and then then sort of uh, assess it. Um, so, uh, like Ellie said, he, and, and Ian, he's he's worth so much to this club. There's not just yeah. the, the the financial side of it; it's the feel good factor as well. Mm -hmm. We need no, that, and we've needed that around. Yeah, there's, You're right. there's no better thing than seeing Sonny bang in a goal, do, do the little do the little TV screen in front of his uh, his face, and uh, you know the fans are happy. He's beaming, smile. Everybody's uh, sharing the moment. I, I just think he's one of these uh, absolute treasures that we just gotta enjoy every moment of, and uh, yeah. let, him, let him play until he suddenly. He, he suddenly isn't good enough. That's 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 the only the only way it'll be. I and think he'll, he'll become an ambassador for the club. I'm sure as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. And who knows? Maybe he'll take his badges. Maybe he'll fancy it. Or more likely, I think at the end of his career, he's probably going to want to go back, maybe to playing career or um, or similar, and just like just have a sort of that link up with the fans back home. And um, there's a kind of a tribute to a, a thank you to all the support he's had over the years. That's all I can think of. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get rid of him for anybody at the moment. He's our best player. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't deny it. There's absolutely no denying that he's our best player currently. Um, I don't even know who I'd pick as second best right now, but he's our best attacking player by a long shot, and I think will be even even after maybe even after we hit the market this summer. Um, yeah. So. Not many, not much more stuff going on, except for obviously you guys know about the the, the match, the the uh, preseason match happening, the uh, visit. Where is it? Visit some somewhere. I don't remember what the trophy's called anymore. But Bayern are coming to the lane for a preseason friendly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's, I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, do you guys think that there's going to be much love shown for? 
for Kane and even Eric Dyer maybe um, when when they come back and when they come back and see us. Oh, for, for me, with Dyer, I don't even hate him. I just don't care. I'm just glad he's gone. Up. It, it leads to nothing. Um, Kane, I've always got a soft spot for. He's been fantastic for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I will always welcome him back. It's not like that. It's not like that bitter feeling I had when um, you know, some other players have left and, and under a cloud. And the fact that he didn't go, the fact that he didn't go to, um, let me make sure. Yeah, but the fact that he didn't go to another Premier League team was a good thing. Yeah. With Kane. I think that that was his yeah. saving grace. That's the reason why. That's the reason why there's still a love for him, and there will still be love for him. Um, uh, someone at the right at the beginning of the chat put in a comment about you know what do, what do the panel think about thirty pound for the for the ticket for the buying game? Um, I mean, maybe I'm out of touch, but I actually think that's quite a good deal to watch uh, a team of the quality of buying in a pre. I know it's a pre-season friendly. So wait, how much was it? I, I, I missed that. Yeah, so it's all right. It was right at the beginning, but don't worry about it, Colin. Someone, I, I got the impression they were complaining anyway that it's thirty pounds to watch the to watch oh. the Bayern friendly, and I actually didn't think that was a bad price at all. Yeah, no, I, 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 I would pay it. I would pay it. Uh, it's, you know, but I get, I get. It. I don't know how much preseason friendlies normally cost. I'm out of touch. I'm, in, I'm a bit out of touch with it. Um, I, so I don't know how much they normally I, I cost. I think the trouble is the cost of everything. You go into the ground if you want something to eat and drink as well. You're suddenly looking at a very, very large amount of money for a day out, especially if you bring kids with you or something as well. Mm. Yeah. Think, no, fair. Since it's just a friendly, I think it's almost irrelevant the money. I mean, if it was me, I'd probably let people in for free and just make the money off the merchandise. Um, Daniel Levy has just rolled over and had a heart attack and yeah, died no. when you said that. We really could, though. I mean, um, people, yeah. got, people have, if they're coming for free, especially with family, they're yeah. going to spend their money on stuff. They're going to want replica shirts. They're going to want some food. Speaking, speaking of replica shirts. Sure. making money. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry about that. Just joking. Uh... But it goes, goes into the you know some of the... Hate, hatred that's gone back towards the club or Levy in particular over the uh, ticket prices in general, isn't it? Um, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll make the point um, as far as I'm concerned, with senior citizens, they should get in for free supplied with a hot drink as well because pe- people have paid their dues over the years. Mm. Yeah, how much, how much have you bled out? How much money have you bled out of them over the years? It, yeah. Exactly. Fuck exactly. Yeah. And people are just still going to come in. They're going to supply. They're going to make up for it in you know, merchandise and stuff. Especially, yeah. you know, family goes out. Oh, I can take granddad along with them. Perhaps he gets in for free. All the money they've saved there, they're probably going to blow it on other stuff anyway at the club. It this really doesn't matter. It's like, it's like penalising people at source. And um, I've heard people saying it's the experience you pay for. It's the whole thing. And I don't agree with that. That well, that's what we have to do. But I, mm. I think it, the Pete, you shouldn't be charging premium rates just for watching the game. If you're making the money up on other other items within the club, you know, like I said, club shop, food, drink. If people want to come and just watch the game, why make it so expensive? If the, if if you're looking for the day out experience, you can pay for that anyway. And what's what's the difference there? But there's a lot of people that think it's just um, restrictive. Um, for, mm. for likes of me and several people who are not even living in the area now, yeah, that you put the travel costs and everything on top. It's insane amounts of money. I'm not. I'm not going to going to be going anytime soon. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's a bigger it's a bigger sort of um, problem with the game in general. I think, um, and it stems from all that massive amount of money that's been pumped in at the high end of the game, and mm. it is filtered down. Clubs have to make more money to pay higher wages and and so on it's, it's an endless circle but you have to weigh it up against the cost of having a night in with a movie and a bit of food now yeah last That's night I, I rented a movie uh and i went to the dollar tree which I, you guys don't have over there it's not like Poundland. i think it's the same same fucking place mm. uh but went to the dollar tree to get snacks and i rented a movie and i spent like 25 20 26 dollars and that was just me and me and beth and I was at home watching a movie. Uh, so, you know, everything's expensive these days. You're right, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just us doing it, to be fair. So, I mean, yeah. you know, 
I, I mean, there's a joke that does the rounds here, Colin. It probably translates into American about you know, a guy goes to the to the movies with his girlfriend. You know, two tickets. You know, two cokes and uh, and a and a box of sweeties, and says, "Sorry, I've only got a 50, uh, as in a fifty pound <laughs> note." And the guy, you know, the guy at the cinema says, "It's okay, you can put the sweets back." You know, it's yeah, no shit. That's that's the, rough. The but yeah, is, I totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. Cost of the cinema is ludicrous. It is. Oh, no. what, you know what else is ludicrous? Having to work, guys. And I've, I've not really been watching the clock good enough. i got to work in 26 minutes. But it takes me a while to get things ready. So I'm going to put the jazz on. We're going to start closing down. Yeah. Um, I like to I like to end the show with some, some slow jazz. Uh, just kind of get everything going. But there's also some people that have jumped in very recently I would like to say hi to. Donna Cullen is here, everybody. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Rob <laughs> Belcher. Oh, yes. like Rob Donna. Belcher in the house. <laughs> Uh, I know I said hi to Scooby D2. Scooby has been in and around and hanging out, but I don't know if I've said hi to Scoobs. Uh, Danny, uh, Danny Rumsey's in the house. Big up, Danny. Good to see you, man. Um, and big up again to Jess. Jess has been awesome and and has uh, been pushing everybody to help get me to that thousand mark. Uh, we are very close. I think it might be 11 away from a thousand subs. Uh, so, so, yes. Have a look at this. So, yeah, more people. Get get joined in if you can, guys. If you haven't subbed, please do it. Here's Jess's channel. I just posted as well. And there are some other channels I would like to talk about real quick before we head out. Main one being uh, L. Tell Cockerell. He is my co-host, my good buddy, my friend. Uh, and, and he is trying to grow his personal channel as well as being co-host here. He also has a personal channel that he is working on. Uh, and we need to get him up as well um so there is el tau cockerel uh go and make sure you have joined up there and also uh jess at, at jesse talks football jsy talks football uh make sure you have sub to both of them um yeah guys um is, is there anything we'll go in a line and have everybody uh if they have any last if i guess we're not dying so these aren't our last words but you know what i'm saying uh, the last words on the stream uh and we'll start with um Ellie, Ellie, ladies first. Yeah, I just want to pick up my girl Kate because she's done a fantastic mm. stream. I got, this I, I got that link. I got that link. Yeah, One second. She's, she's done a fantastic stream with Jimbo, her husband, about mental health issues. Oh so hell yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. It's so good. And there's the link right there, guys. People, Make sure to check that out. A lot of people came in who were saying about family members and. Other yeah. things, I, uh, I wish really I could have made it. Up, and it was such a good stream. So That's wonderful. Mark Hill Kate for doing yeah. that. Brilliant. Absolutely big up. That's I, I, I only wish I could have been there. That's really, really good stuff. That's that, yeah. that all very close to me. So big up. Yeah, I know because I, I know it's close to you as well, Colin. Yeah. So watch it back and you'll really enjoy the stream. There's a lot of people on there that come in that tell, tell you a few home truths about what they're going through. Yeah. And you feel for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Tell Mike's bigging everybody up. Big up yourself, dog. Rob Belcher, too. Like, sorry, we're ending right as you got here, Rob. Um, and uh, one other thing. Okay. So, yeah, the Ellie, uh, thank you for that. Um, and yeah, big up. Okay. Big up. Um, and the, on your show again, Colleen. Thank yeah. You. We'll do it. We'll do it again soon. You know, we will. Yeah. Um, Ian. You've always, your eyes are always invited, by the way. Um, but yeah, Ian, um, what say you, buddy? Anything? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's been a pleasure to be on. I have, I've been away a, a little bit, so I've, I've not done as many shows uh, as I'd like. But it's one of those things when you come on and you you come on with, with people as knowledgeable as Coover and, and yourself and Ellie, then uh, it's an absolute pleasure talking about Tottenham. And, of course, we haven't had a game for two weeks, so we've got nothing to moan about in particular. But I think hopefully we're all starting to get optimistic about what the, the summer might bring. Um as I say, I, uh, it is slow, and it's uh, uh, part of the problem, of course, has been the lack of success on the field over the last 20 years. But I genuinely think the club's going in the right direction um, at the moment. Um, but there has to be there has to be trophies in the trophy room. Enough is enough now. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yep. Uh, Goofs? Um, Bobby K and I will... <laughs> Oh, sorry. yeah. Bobby Kay and I will be on again on Saturday uh, doing Coove and the Kang. Another bit of a uh, silliness as usual. I think we'll be doing a, 
another Donna Cullen uh, tribute uh, show again. I was gonna. I almost did something mean, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm rising above bullying today. I was. All right. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah but, all um, right. But okay. Um, but yeah, we'll 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 be back anyway, doing the usual sort of the silly games, spot the bull, and things like that. Um, yeah, and just just to kind of wind down to the end of the week as we usually do. Um, other than that, I was going to say big up to uh, Jess and uh, the, the the Leeds crew that we've always we've got quite a uh, yeah good understanding with lately. Um, that they're, they're a lot of fun. They do similar things on the weekend as well on that chat on a channel. Jess, there we go. Jazz wide talks football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she uh, is. It, it, it's fun. It's she's fun. gonna be on late. She's gonna be on later. What time, Jess? Let everybody know. Uh, I'll throw your link in again. Get get some of our hopefully get some more of our peeps over there. Um, um and they're doing the Leeds Leeds game uh, watch along tomorrow night as well, I believe. So that that'll be good too. Definitely sounds awesome. Uh, speaking of watch alongs, uh, there's gonna be a talking ball watch along Saturday for the match. Uh, it's this new thing we've started. It's been going really well. Every time I've been home and we've done one, I, we've won. Uh, we have done one where I was on the road. Obviously, that was the last match we lost. Um, so I'll be at home for this one. Don't worry. So we should win. So that's a good thing. Um, also, later tonight, um, Jose is mopping up. Jose has his mop-up show tonight. It's at 9. I'm pretty sure he's moved it up to 9. Um, so... Make sure you tune in to El Tel Cockerell. Let me get that link up one more time and tune in to Jose uh, this evening. And then in the morning uh, on El Tel Cockerell, it's the ladies takeover show. And I say the morning, it's it's like 11, right, Ellie? No. Yeah. Uh, it's 11 o'clock tomorrow. The, the ladies will be on Jose's channel. Um, and yeah, so uh, make sure you get over to El Tel Cockerell for both his mop up ask me anything show tonight and for the ladies take over tomorrow um and yeah guys uh that is everything for me um like i said i gotta go run and answer people's calls about their broken internet i'm really excited to do that <laughs> um hopefully that hopefully i only get cursed at a little bit today is that's my goal um but yeah everybody oh let me get that out of the way too thank you again for coming in i'm gonna end with the back pasta coglu um banner because that's what i think we all need to do and i'll play us out with our james madison song if everybody is ready is everybody good yeah we good all right one one thing too before i do it daily there's not no, been much no, wheeling and no, dealing no, 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 <laughs> fuck off oh, oh. team has got James Madison, James Madison is what we need, whoa, thank God we got James Madison, this kid plays ball like you would never believe, whoa. Guys, I forgot to say uh, that our prediction show, our weekly prediction show is tomorrow, um, same time, same place. So you'll want to tune in to either Talking Ball or El Tel Cockerell. We're dual streaming uh, and we're doing our weekly prediction show tomorrow um, at um, the same time, 3.30. Uh, so see you guys there. This is going to be an awkward end.